So I think time is short. I'll be very brief. Uh, I'll be talking on UVH search for the cause. UVH is one of the cause of visual morbidity. And uh, the most important aspect of this that is not moving. Yeah. Now, what is the cause of the uveitis? Etiological diagnosis remains a challenge all the time. So I often feel like that the patients don't ask me that what is the cause of the uveitis or the students don't ask me what is the cause of the uveitis. No matter, you may say that no matter what causes it, I'll treat with the steroids. That's not the true. Investigations are required to identify autoimmune infectious uveitis to identify specific uveitic entity, to obtain diagnostic, prognostic information, and take therapeutic directions. So I'll be showing some cases only. This is a 30-year-old male, pain, redness, photophobia for three days, and you can see that there is a hypopia and a fibrin in the anterior chamber. What test you will do? How do you approach? For me, the history is very important. Is it first episode? Is there recurrence? How is the previous response to treatment? Is there low backache? Is there oral or genital ulceration? If there is no oral or genital ulceration, I would do that HLA B27 first. And that would be my first investigation. But in a scenario like this, where a 30 year old man, not much pain, not much redness, but mutton fat chaotic precipitate. In our country like India, where I should do that TB and sarcoid first, that Mantu quantifier and TB gold test. XHS, the possible high resolution CD chest and serum angiotensin converting engine to rule out sarcoid. So, TB and sarcoid to be ruled out first. So, if it's negative, we should go for any facility is available to do the PCR, polymerase chain reaction for mycobacterium tuberculosis from AC tap. In that particular case, AC tap was positive for mycobacterium tuberculosis DNA. This is a patient, 59 year old man with the pigmented chaotic precipitate, intraocular pressure was very high. What could be the diagnosis and what test you will do? In this case, the suspicion of raised IOP and uh, with the pigmented KPs will indicate a possible etiology of viral anterior uveitis. As virus cannot be cultured, we will do need to do the polymer chain reaction for ac for HSV1, HSV2, VZV, and CMB, both nested and real time. And in, in fact, the real-time PCR was shown for HSV1, was positive in this case, and patient responded to antiviral treatment. This is a patient, 20-year-old male, no pain, redness, and frota. There are fine keratic precipitates are present. And in this case, you do not need to investigate because it's a fifth uveitis. It's a kind of an autoimmune uveitis. You won't find anything by investigation. No need of steroid before cataract surgery, gratifying results with FECO and IOS. This is a 25-year-old female, blurring of vision and floaters. And you should look for the vitreous cells and debris. If you see that such vitreous cells and debris, you will look for injured ophthalmoscopy very carefully for exudates in the inferior vitreous and retina. So our past on exudates, this is intermediate UVI. And in such cases in our country, like to rule out TB and sarcoid first, you should do the MANTU quantifier and TB gold test, serum angiotensin converting enzyme, to rule out sarcoid and HSCT chest to rule out TB and sarcoid. And in this particular case, it was found to be mycobacterium tuberculosis infection, parenchymal infiltration of the lung or with the high resolution CT chest. And PCR confirmed the diagnosis of mycobacterium tuberculosis DNA with 2,204 copies. And this is a case of intermediate uveitis, has simple high resolution CT chest, showed high level lymphadenopathy, confirming a diagnosis of sarcoid. UVITIS. Now some posterior UVITIS case. This is a 68-year-old male and who had dimness of vision or left eye, one month, vision 6, 18 and 9, 18. And you can see the three nodules are there in the choroid. What do you think? So here in our country, we should think of tuberculosis, sarcoid. As the patient is elderly, you should keep the possibility of metastasis also. And you should do a MANTO quantifier and TB gold test, high resolution CT test. Serum angiotensin converting the enzyme estimation to rule out sarcoid. If all negative, do a PET scan to rule out metastasis. And this case, as the investigations revealed that serum AC was elevated, MANTU was negative, quantifier and TB gold test was negative, ESR was raised, and this indicates possible etiology of sarcoidosis by the investigation alone. 
And these are patients based on the investigation treated with oral prednisone. And lo and behold, there's a complete resolution of inflammation over the period of time with the oral steroid. And three months after, the vision improved to 6676, the lesions flattened. This is a similar case, 26-year-old woman and who had got a lesions in the choroid. This is a single sighted whitish lesion. And this is a TB or sarcoid. This is a dilemma. If we do that, here, pulmonary chest X-ray itself showed pulmonary tuberculosis and there was a military lesions in the lung and cervical lymph node biopsy showed necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. And this patient responded with a treatment, as you say, with the anti therapy from the previous lesions of the, on the right-hand corner of the early lesions and the complete resolution of the lesions. And this is a multifocal choroiditis. Here you should think of the possibility of APMPPA, that is acute posterior multifocal placoid pigment epitheliopathy, multifocal serpiginoid choroiditis, sarcoid, and lastly syphilis. And these are multifocal pigmented, uh, multifocal serpiginoid choroiditis, which is thought to be now tubercular origin. And here you should do the X ray chest, the HRCT chest, uh, or a um, MANTU test, quantifier and TB gold test, serum angiotensin converting engine, and VDRL and PPHA to rule out syphilis which can produce placoid lesion. Here is a lesion showing a retina, retinitis, and you can see the fluffy white lesion and whitish patch, ill-defined margin, associated retinal edema, overlying vitreous says, a leading edge of the lesion, and blood vessels cannot be traced over the lesion. And this is a retinitis, almost always the infective except vessels disease. And when you see the such retinochoroiditis with localized vitreous says, Clinically, the phenotype tells you that this is a toxoplasma on origin and it should be treated with antitoxoplasma treatment with oral steroids started 48 hours after. The clinical diagnosis allows to confirm PCR of intraocular fluid in atypical cases like this, which was an HIV positive patient, diffuse retinitis was seen, and PCR was positive for toxoplasma. And this is a case of acute retinal necrosis. And we should do a viral test, PCR for the HIV, HIV, and CMV. HIV was positive. Patient, based on that uh, investigation, treated with antiviral treatment, both the oral and intravenous. Gansaclovir given, and timely barrage laser was given to uh, salvage the vision. This is a case of uh, the vitritis with dense exudates, as well as the retinal vasculitis with the uh, um, 34 year old man, sudden diminished of vision. So, if it doesn't fit with the known clinical diagnosis, one should think of syphilis and the good history history of exposure, VDRL and RPR, which is a non treponemal test, and APT AVS and TPHA, which should be done. And this was positive for VDRL and TPHA. Patient responded to the treatment. Case of retinal vasculitis, theory is the case. We can see the retinal vasculitis with the exudate and um, uh, there's a thick exudates over the retinal vessel. And you should do the Mantu quantifier and TB gold test, HRCD test to rule out tuberculosis. Indeed, it was a tuberculosis. And with the ATT and steroids, you can see there is a complete resolution of the lesions improvement of the vision. And this is not a TB. Here you can see the skip lesions, candle was dripping. This is due to the sarcoid. And this was confirmed by the HRCD test showing bilateral hyalur lymphadenopathy. Serum AC was elevated. And this is one of the cases mimicking tubercular retinal vasculitis, but if you look carefully, there are cosmos spots were there, and this is suggestive of any SLE. And in fact, the patient had a malar rash, and a serum ANA showed uh, um, immunofluorescence of a positive anti DS DNA, it was showing that speckled hyperfluorescence. And this is a 20 year old man, history of fever. Dengue, rickettsia, typhoid, and chikungunya should be ruled out, and no specific treatment, treatment of the underlying disease, and one need to give oral prednisone. Last but not the least, don't miss it. There's a muscular syndrome, and is a patient with a hypopian, 80-year-old girl, not responding to the topical and systemic steroid. In such cases, one need to do an invasive test, like anterior chamber tap, which showed vasophilic cohesive tumor cells, suggestive of retinoblastoma. And this is a seven-year-old girl, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, peripheral blood smear is normal. CSF was negative for malignant cells. You can see the infiltrate in the iris, hypopian, 
and this patient had on AC taps of lymphoblast suggestive of recurrence of leukemia. And this is a case of lipo, leo, leopard skin like appearance and with the vitreous biopsy showed atypical lymphoid cells, cell blocks showed large lymphocytes with pleomorphism and, and necrosis of the tissue. Last case is a serpiginous choroiditis was diagnosed, but final aspiration biopsy showed large lymphoma cells with necrosis of the tissue. MRI showed serious lymphoma. So you hear this of the extremes of age, you think of masquerade syndrome. And this is a 55-year-old lady which has got vitreous woolly strand of opacity. One should rule out the end of thalmitis in such cases. The vitreous biopsy was done and vitrectomy showed, in fact, the Congo red strain was positive for amyloidosis. So it was not an end of thalmitis, but endogenous end of thalmitis. It was a vitreous amyloidosis. I skipped the last case. There's a coriatinal biopsy was done and which produced a diagnosis. So what is your diagnosis is often a dilemma and um, thoughtful investigations can give to the diagnosis take home message. The good UVIT sensory oriented history, as I mentioned to you before, look at the patient as a whole, identify anatomic location and extent of the UVIT, make a short differential diagnosis, choose the investigation wisely, go stepwise approach, and lastly, Paul Fritz, biopsy. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Since